Welcome to Sobcast the Podcast, where I, Christina Wolfgram, beg the question, what even is mental health? This podcast is created in collaboration with Dive Through, a mental wellness company that actually knows what they're talking about. Okay, welcome back. Hello. You know, I'm going to start with a little trigger warning. It's my favorite. I'm doing it. Southcast the podcast is about the pursuit of good mental health, but we are going to be talking about some not so good mental health things like anxiety, depression, and the occult. Actually, I don't really know anything about the occult. So if you're here for the lowdown on occult stuff, maybe this isn't the right episode for you, actually. But our topic today is something that I used to think was associated with the occult. Does that count? Please, you know what? Stay. It's fine. (laughs) Maybe we can Google some occult stuff later together. Does that sound good? Today's topic is tarot. Tarot cards. I feel like they have become extra popular lately. I've been seeing them on Instagram. I've been seeing designs on shirts and urban outfitters. I see a lot of stuff on Pinterest and I am thrilled because tarot cards are actually one of my favorite mental health and creativity tools. When I first started reading tarot, I think I was about 19 and I was going to a friend's house and uh, I took the metro to her house. The metro is the train in Washington, D.C., just FYI. And she was a little late picking me up from the station. So I ended up wandering around into a magic shop. And I'm talking like cheesy magic shop, like pulling doves out of a hat and uh, disappearing wands and stuff. But also they had this little bookshelf and a tarot deck caught my eye and I got it and it came with this little booklet of all the meanings of each card and I don't know I loved reading other people's cards because I realized pretty quickly that I could provide what's the word comfort and I could find comfort for myself in these cards because You can interpret them however you want, even though the little booklet, you know, is a guide. It's it's less rules and more of a guideline. You know what I'm saying? So I've been dabbling in tarot for many years, only a few years because I was 19. So that that, that was like two or three years ago or something. And... I have heard from a couple of people that there's still this kind of stigma around tarot cards because, I don't know, they're, I think they're used as a prop in movies a lot when they need to like fill a room with like scary witch stuff. It's like red candles, scary spell book, scary tarot cards, cauldron, I don't know, um... But actually, the tarot cards were invented to just be like a regular card game back in the 15th century in Northern Italy. Yes, I knew that off the top of my head. I absolutely did not check my notes. So yeah, so when people started using tarot cards in the 1700s, which is the 18th century, I always get So how many years have I been a human and I still can't remember that the 18th century is the 1700s? Like, it's always like one less. So the 15th century was the 1400s, right? Yes. Okay, we're all on the same page. Anyway, so in the 1700s, when people started using those cards to like tell fortunes and to, uh, I don't know, communicate with the other side stuff like that. It was the equivalent of me taking like a deck of cards and like pulling one out and being like, ooh, it's the two of clubs. Watch out for taxes. (laughs) Except for that tarot cards traditionally 
the artwork is just stunning and the entire deck tells the story of a life there are all kinds of different life phases represented in the cards through different characters and different kind of like mythologies but even if you don't care about that stuff they're just really beautiful and I think I've said this before but no object in fact nothing at all can have meaning unless you assign it meaning so I guess if you do get some tarot cards and you assign them the meaning that they're magic then you know what they are they freaking are but if you buy tarot cards and you assign them the meaning that they're they're scary and something to be afraid of you're gonna get a lot of proof of that because you're gonna be interpreting the cards through that lens yeah oh wait i went to tell you a really cool word that i learned man i was gonna sound so smart I'm going to tell you right now, okay? I'm going to use it in a sentence. Um, in the 1700s, tarot cards were used for cartomancy. 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 Which is fortune telling or divination using a deck of cards. <laughs> wow, I'm just full of knowledge today. Isn't that, isn't that great? <laughs> Now, feel free to go use that in a sentence wherever you are, wherever you're going. One of the reasons I want to talk about tarot cards um, in terms of mental health is because of what I said in terms of finding comfort. Uh, The way you use tarot cards is that Well, actually, you can use them however you want, but the way I use tarot cards is in the tradition that you kind of ask them a question, and it should be a pretty specific question. I usually like to go for yes or no questions, and then you can draw one card. You could draw a bunch of cards. I mean, there are some spreads that you can find that are like 12 cards, and I've even done spreads where you do one for each month of the year. And you just kind of look forward to what's going to happen in the future and, you know, take some good energy away from that. Uh, I've gotten my tarot cards read a few times and uh, actually for a while it was all of the readings. I want to say three different readings and they were all during a time when I was at a job that I had stayed at too long, like way past when I was happy and like mentally okay at this job. And the card that I kept getting was the tower, which has a really scary image on it. It's literally like a castle tower getting struck by lightning with people flying out of it. Like it's pretty graphic. We don't love. And, you know, it was weird that I got that card in all three readings but I mean if I was asking the question like do I need to make a change it's like (laughs) yeah something's ending and you're like staying in the tower when it's on fire like you need to evacuate like please leave (laughs) so I don't know. I still stayed at the job way longer even after that. So I'm not going to say that it completely changed my life. But it is interesting how certain things come up again and again. Like the, I feel like some there are some cards I've never even pulled in the tarot deck. And I don't know, maybe it's also because I'm a really shitty shuffler. It's possible. I practice my shuffling and I'm still just like a five-year-old. But that's part of, you know, the magic. Another mentally healthy thing that I like about tarot card stuff is that I think it gives you a sense of power and I think it gives you a sense of control. So, yeah, in terms of me getting the tower drawn in three different readings, it gave me the power to be like, I have options. (laughs) 
Sometimes one option is less comfortable than the other. <laughs> but I do have control. I get to make the decision. This card isn't making a decision. I, I can move on however I want. And I don't know, it's hard to remind yourself of that, just saying like, like looking into the mirror and being like, yeah, I totally have power and control. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, don't. No, you don't. <laughs> but if it's just like a beautiful card reminding you that you have power and control, I mean, that can be really nice. I have been so into tarot for so long that I actually started this past year designing my own tarot deck which I'm really excited about and a little shy to talk about because it's such a big project there are 78 cards <laughs> and the, the the deck is gonna be Harry Potter themed because I feel like you know how I said there's like a whole life represented in the cards I feel like there is a card for each major event in the books and each character. And if you're like me and grew up reading those books and using them as a form of communication with your friends and your siblings, like I feel like my brother and I would have full conversation <laughs> in just Harry Potter references, then I think it will make tarot cards more accessible and, I don't know, fun in a new way. Plus, writing about each card has been so wonderful like I love reading di different interpretations of the cards um one of my favorite books ever of all time is called Modern Tarot by Michelle T she's brilliant she's fucking brilliant and um it's just such a modern like it says in the title is a modern interpretation um, but it also has little bits of her life in it and such personal details about times where she felt connected to that card. Um, it's really encouraging when the, uh, each card explanation ends with like a little ritual you can do to, to turn the tide. So if the card kind of has a neg negative connotation, like how you can kind of work your way out of the situation and if it has a good connotation it's kind of how to like work with that power um some people when they pull tarot cards they pull them right side up um and some people read them also with some of them upside down and then the card has this whole other meaning if it's upside down like it means the opposite sometimes it's bad but um Michelle T actually inspired me to only read cards right side up because, I mean, there are some cards that are already kind of freaky. Like, I mean, there's a card called death. And of course, that means a million things. But getting it, it's kind of like, oh, great. Cool. I love this. It's Tuesday. Death. <laughs> great. Um, and another person I wanted to tell you about is Kim Kranz who designed the Wild Unknown Tarot and her little, her little, her little guidebook, her beautiful, stunning guidebook that comes with the deck uh, has like these just almost poetic, concise little paragraphs about each card. And the imagery is... I think a nod to the traditional tarot, you know, characters, but uh, through the, the lens of animals. So there are a lot of animals and colors and sometimes you're like, wow, I'm a lion. And sometimes you're like, I'm a goose. Anyway, <laughs> I thought it would be fun if I did a little tarot card reading for you right here, right now. I know I can hear you like yelping with excitement. That's great. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Um, if you're on, t <laughs> wait, do you get these videos on TikTok? <laughs> Where people are I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know why this is so funny to me. Because <laughs> I love them, but do you get these? Ooh, do you get these videos on TikTok where people are like? 
if you're getting this on October 3rd, this message is for you. I have a, I have something from the beyond that the spirits are trying to tell you. And then they like take a tarot card and they're like, (gasps) you're going to eat a Lunchable later. (laughs) I'm laughing, I think, because I live for those. (gasps) Ah! I just, oh, (gasps) Okay, to just walk you through what happened, I just dropped a tarot card and then went to pick it up and then hit my head on my own bookshelf. So this is going really well. (sighs) Thank you for bearing with me. Yikes. Anyway, I'm shuffling so slow because I suck. (laughs) But anyway... I thought I could pull three cards and that the question could be, what can we focus on this week to feel our best? Yeah, we want to feel our best this week. So what can we focus on? Little cards. Tell me everything. This is how I didn't even I'm like shuffling just by like throwing the cards into one from one hand to the other and I never did it like this until friggin TikTok and they just do this until a card falls out but I'm so slow that of course it takes a hundred years for a card to fall out so let's just be patient thank you thank you for being patient I'm not struggling I'm very good at that Ooh, ooh. okay so here's the the magician we love to see it. This is part of the Major Arcana, which are the first 22 cards, I think, of the deck. And they, I believe, usually represent, like, people or, like, personality traits. Like, things you probably want to embody, if that makes sense. We'll see. You know what? We'll, we'll talk about it and we'll see what you think. So, um, the magician is number one, the deck starts at zero. And so technically this is the second card. Kim Kranz's, Kim Kranz's, Kim Kranz's illustration is so stunning. It shows a cheetah with an infinity sign etched in its spots, which I think is so lovely. I always, whenever I see the infinity sign, I'm just like, infinite possibilities. How wonderful. How wonderful. And then there are four suits in the tarot deck, just like regular card decks. You know, the hearts and the spades and the diamonds and the, I was going to say the stars. That's not right. Whatever the other one is. And in the tarot deck, we have the swords pentacles cups and wands and each one of those kind of has a theme the one that I usually think about is cups because it signifies emotion like your inner world pentacles I think are more like physical things like money and possessions and your job and stuff like that and then um I completely forget what the other ones are but that's why we have a booklet (laughs) and also (laughs) I hope that you hearing that I don't have all of this memorized, even though I've been doing this since I was 19. (laughs) So for, oh my God, like 11 years. No, wait, I can't do math. What is it? What would it be? 12 years? 12? Oh my God, that seems impossible. It doesn't matter. I've been doing it for some time now. And I don't have it all memorized because I like feeling like Kim or Michelle or whoever's little book I'm reading are there with me. Like I have backup. So I'm going to pull two other cards and then we'll go through each one of them. How exciting. Wow. Wow. She's a professional. I'm shuffling. I'm shuffling. 
I'm shuffling. Just focus on the question. Just focus on, like, how you want to feel your best self this week. Ooh, because we're going to be our best self. The best part of being yourself is being your best self. Oh, my God. Can you hear it? (laughs) Can you hear me shuffling? I just need you to know that it's really happening. You have to believe me. Maybe we only get one card? No. (gasps) Oh, my God. Okay. Well, a bunch of them just fell on me. So, actually, we get (laughs) five cards. (laughs) We get five cards. (laughs) Oh, no. Ooh. Okay. So, we have... (laughs) This is the, okay, (laughs) something about tarot also is that cards traditionally have um, Roman numerals at the top, so I don't know who decided that was a good idea. I hate it. No offense, Romans. I hate Roman numerals. So this is five plus three is eight. So this is the eight of cups. It's a pretty scary one. I'll just say that, but um, we don't have to be scared. Ooh, we have justice, which shows a white cat and a black cat, and they're crossing tails because they love each other. And we have the father of pentacles. Sometimes this is also called the king of pentacles. Um, oh my god. Yes, I dropped it. Butterfingers. Shouldn't have put butter all over my fingers before. <laughs> I'm so sorry. So um Kim Kim. Yes, we're on a first name basis. Kim's illustration has, what is this, a a buck or like a reindeer with beautiful rainbow antlers, which I think is stunning. We love to see it. And then the last one is the lovers, which I think is so sweet. I love this interpretation of it. It's two geese. are Are these Canadian geese, gooses? And if I recall correctly, they mate for life, which is so nice. So that's a beautiful card. Also has lots of colors on it. It's just happy times. So let's go through these. And actually, because there's so many cards, I'm going to rely pretty heavily on Kim. And then together, we will come up with what message we get, we're getting, we're listening for from these pieces of cardboard. Okay, so the magician. Dun, dun, dun. Self-empowerment action. The magician is a card of boundless, expansive energy. Why am I reading this to you like we're in second grade or like you're in second grade and I'm a teacher? I am not a teacher. I'm not qualified. Whereas many of the major arcana deal with stillness or aspects of the mind, this card is all about action. Action, action, action. It's time to see yourself as the wildcat. Embrace his speed, grace, and abilities. Don't be afraid to begin. You have the power of all four elements within your reach. Now is the time to use them. Okay, well, that's a very clear message to me. If you want to feel your best, we have to work at it. So if you know that there are things that feel good that you can make a little time for every day, or if you want to do like just one longer activity that makes you feel good, I think that's awesome. If there's a project you wanted to start, I think it now is the time. I mean, it's up to you. I'm not the boss. Um... But yeah, I love that card. It really is. It's infinite possibilities. And you have the power within you all along, Dorothy. Okay, next card. This is the Eight of Cups. No, 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 no. It shows a, basically just like a giant black mountain, scary mountain peak situation with a bunch of broken cups. So don't, make sure you're wearing shoes when you walk through there. Okay stagnation, ill health. The Eight of Cups sends an urgent message to pack your bags and move on. There's no hope of rekindling what's been lost. You must start anew. This card also points to phases of illness and physical stagnation. The message could not be more clear. Nothing good remains for you here. Not this podcast episode. I don't think that's what she's talking about. Please stay. 
Lift your eyes to the horizon and let your feet lead you forward. Oh, but wear shoes, like I said. (laughs) So this is a great example of a time where we're getting a car that's kind of scary. I mean, the word illness is scary. The word stagnation is scary. The idea of having to move on from stuff can be really freaking scary. But this doesn't necessarily mean that there's something that's encompassing your entire life. This could be something like maybe you've been eating the same Amy's meal every day. Like you just keep eating that cheddar and broccoli bowl like every single day. And it's good, but like I think it's time to move on. Like maybe try the kale one. Uh, the cheesy kale one. You don't want to get too crazy with the changes here. Just, you know. If there is something popping up in your mind that is big, like, oh my gosh, yeah, like I've been wanting to quit my job or like, oh my gosh, yeah, I want a new house or I, I hate where I'm living or I really need to get new litter for my cat. I feel like this one isn't working very well. Now's the time. I don't know. Actually, I don't feel comfortable giving you the advice to like quit your job. I don't think it has to be that drastic. It could just be a really small action in terms of like letting something negative go. So sounds like magician, infinite possibilities of doing positive things. Remember that you're powerful. Eight of cups. Part of being powerful is knowing when to move on and not carrying around a bunch of broken cups with you. Kind of like the time when my car got broken into and someone like broke a window and even though I got the window fixed, there's still glass in the back of my car. Why am I telling you this? But yeah, um, I think that's a sign for me that I need to just freaking get a vacuum cleaner in there. That was years ago. I'm fine. Okay, next card. Justice. Ah! Weirdly enough, this is also an eight. Is it weird? I don't know. We get to decide. I usually think of the higher numbers as kind of the end of a cycle, whereas the beginning numbers are kind of the beginning, obviously, (laughs) of a lot of things, but also metaphor. So maybe eight is also just another reminder that uh, it's the circle of life. And sometimes you're an eight and sometimes you're one. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. You with me? (laughs) (laughs) All right, Justice, here we go. What do you have to say, Kim Kranz? Okay, decisions, karma. With tails intertwined, two cats look directly at you, waiting for you to choose between them, which is right and which is wrong. The Justice card implies a weight or heaviness surrounding a choice you have to make. Now is not the time to shun the concept of divine balance or karma. All of your choices affect your life and sometimes the lives of those around you, both now and in the future. I think choose happiness if you can. I think well, I don't know. Listen to your own voice. Did anything come up for you in there? That's another card about decision making. Sometimes I get the most anxiety that can sometimes even lead to a depressive episode when I avoid decisions because decisions are hard. (laughs) And sometimes it's not even like a big decision. Like it's not like, I don't know, I was going to say, what if I should get a haircut? That's not even a big decision. But It's, uh, let's say it's like, oh, like, should I move? That's a big decision, but sometimes having a lot of tiny decisions can be just as heavy. So if you're avoiding whether or not you opened your mail, uh, what you're going to say in an email, um, whether or not to text someone, um, whether or not to do a little stretch, go for a little walk. Read a little book. Something that's been happening to me recently is I've just been starting books and never ending them. And I know that's bad. Not bad, but bad for me. 
because eventually I'll be like, I, for some reason, will feel like the books have feelings and I'll be like, I let all of you down. Sorry about that. So <clears throat> for me, I guess I should finish some books, make some decisions. Oh, I'm going to do the dishes. Ooh, wow. She's making moves. She's making moves. Thanks, tarot cards. Okay, we have two more. This is the Father of Pentacles. He's very serious. He looks really furry, though. <laughs> I think I said the wrong thing about what the Major Arcana are. I don't think they're people, actually. I think the, like, kings and queens and pages and... What's the other one? All the people that are involved in the suits are actually the people. This is why you need to Google things. You can't trust me. That's not why you're listening to this, right? If you were expecting an expert, you are in the wrong place. I'm so sorry. Anyway, here's what Kim has to say about the Father of Pentacles. Steady, entrepreneurial. The Father of Pentacles is a steady, gentle man. Upon first meeting, he can almost seem dull because of his extremely calm temperament. But underneath is an incredibly passionate man who prioritizes the stability of his job, family, and home. He's entrepreneurial and diligent at work. A true pleasure to know. Well, well, well. I think we should ignore all of the pronouns in there. So it does not have to be a man. It doesn't have to be someone who identifies as a man. It can be you. It can be someone in your life. It can be someone you want to be. Does that ring any bells for you? Entrepreneurial. Getting shit done. Checking things off that to-do list. There's also a confidence, I think, in being entrepreneurial that I always really admire. Like, there's a, there's a, they, people who are entrepreneurial trust themselves. Like, they know that maybe their efforts aren't going to pay off, like, this week, but they will over time. And um, I would like some more of that kind of confidence, please. Thank you. If you could just send that um, post-haste. Thank you. All right, we have the last card, and it's the lovers, and it's one of my favorite cards. It makes me so happy. It is number six. Okay, the lovers, and it's a beautiful rainbow, shiny happiness, and two geese flying together. The lovers, union, desire, joy. Two Canadian geese are mates for life, traveling partners within an expansive sky. The lovers card is a welcome sight in any reading. In any reading, that's us as it suggests a beautiful and strong relationship on the horizon. Yes, you'll experience all the thrills of desire and romance, but meanwhile, you'll be building a solid foundation together. The lovers honor and respect each other, and with that, they can go anywhere. If you're already in a relationship, it's time to be grateful and nourish this rare and precious gem. Ooh la la. Now, in terms of the question of what can we do this week to feel our best? I think that it's more about the end of that uh, little paragraph. It's, I think it's a great opportunity to look at the relationships in your life and just be like, oh my God, I'm so lucky. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so lucky. Even if it's like, you know, it might be the people you live with. It might be the people you work with, but also like, is there a barista you see a lot? Um, do you see people like outside where you park your car sometimes and you're like, cool, I know your dog's name, even though you've never told it to me. Cause one time I overheard you saying, I'm um, telling your dog to sit. And, and now I know that your dog's name is Rumi. You know, just like cherish that for a minute because I mean, I don't have the science in front of me, but I know for a fact that gratefulness releases nice things in your brain so being grateful and just looking into someone else's face and being like thank god you're here 
feels really good. So I'm gathering the cards now. There's, I don't know how to do this professionally. Again, if you want to look any of these up, I urge you to look at them all with from a positive standpoint, please, because you really can find negative stuff about anything on the internet. But the Magician, the Eight of Cups, Justice, Father of Pentacles, and the Lovers. The Lovers. Here's my Sex in the City reference for this week because apparently everything in my mind is is filed either under like an episode of SpongeBob or an episode of Sex in the City. Do you remember when Carrie first starts seeing um, Baryshnikov? No, wait, is that his name? Petrovsky. <laughs> no, his real name is Mikhail Baryshnikov, and he's amazing. Oh, he's such a good dancer. And she's like, I've taken a lava. And they're like eating breakfast, as always. And they're like, a lava. And she's like, a lava. That seems like a good place to end it, huh? <laughs> I would love to hear what you thought of this reading. Um, you can let me know on Instagram, on the Sobcast the Podcast Instagram. Um, if you love tarot, I want to hear about that too. And if you're even a little bit excited about the prospect of a Harry Potter tarot deck that I make, I would also love the encouragement because sometimes I'm like... <laughs> coloring in Fred and George's hair and I'm like what am I doing <laughs> what the fuck am I doing <laughs> but that's normal right right okay all right I'll talk to you later I love you okay bye thank you so much for hanging out with me today it would super help if you subscribed left a review call your grandma tell her to listen and if you want more sobcast the podcast follow us on instagram all right see you next week love you bye